Do you know what really sucks? Is sitting down to edit your project and realizing that you have gaps in your coverage or shots missing? You need to have a really good, specific, and detailed shot list. Head over to filmmakersecrets.com slash shot list, S-H-O-T-L-I-S-T, to get a killer shot list template along with some training where I show you step-by-step exactly how to use it. There are no secrets, people. The only secret is hard work. Work hard all the time, make mistakes, learn from them, move on, keep learning, and keep working hard. Filmmakers have the power to evoke emotion, inspire thought, and drive universal change in this world. Right now, a real seismic shift is happening in the film industry. This is your best chance to join a new filmmaking movement. You have been called to create an everlasting impact with your unmatched, deep desire to tell authentic stories. So how does a filmmaker thrive in an environment that is almost intentionally designed to bring you down? That is the question, and this podcast reveals the answer. What's happening, filmmakers? It's George BK. Welcome to Filmmaker Secrets Podcast, episode number 56. I'm so excited to introduce my guest, Ricardo Suriano. Am I saying that correct? Yes, you are. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, Ricardo, go ahead and say what's up to our filmmakers and reveal the one filmmaker secret that you've been keeping from us. What's up, everybody? Oh, my goodness. I started the wrong foot, but what's up, everybody? <laughs> Sorry, I'm excited. I mean, I'm nervous. You know, I'm used to be behind the camera, never in front of it. That's right. <laughs> How is everybody doing today? Um, Amazing question. What's my, what's the one filmmaker secret I've been, I, you know, I've been holding on to. And I think don't hate me, but I think the one secret is there are no secrets. There are no secrets, people. The only secret is hard work, work hard all the time, make mistakes, learn from them, move on, keep learning and keep working hard. And I'm sorry to say that, but I grew up in Italy. I grew up with a family. They were like, hey, there's no shortcuts. There's no secrets. It's all about just work hard and you'll get there. (laughs) I appreciate that sentiment. I think that's a very unique answer to that question. Haven't had that before. And, you know, um, Ricardo, reading through your bio, I found this quote super interesting. And you're talking about your sort of parallel between your past work in photography and how that's transferred over into your film work. And you say that it is conducive of an interest in the bringing microscopic or ordinary objects and shining a spotlight on them, more specifically capturing society's biggest paranoias and reflecting them back onto mankind. And I think that is such a beautiful <laughs> summation of one's work that that some anyone can really describe. And filmmakers, I urge you to pay as much attention to your work as Ricardo has in that one simple sentence. Ricardo, I would love for you to take me back, way, way back to that moment, that little spark that got you to believe that you are meant to be a filmmaker, a photographer, a storyteller. Tell me that story. <laughs> All right. So that goes back a long way. I mean, I think sometimes you realize something, you forget about it, and then life just reminds you of it. But the very first time was, I remember watching a movie. I don't remember what movie it was, but I remember I was probably 10, 11, something like that. I was watching this movie with my dad. I mean, my late dad, unfortunately, just passed. And we, I, we started crying at the end of the movie. I saw my dad crying. I was, I was crying. And that was, that was the spark. That's like, I want to give that to people. I want to give that connection, that emotion that perhaps, you know, that you never see your father die. In that moment, you were both so vulnerable and it created a connection between the two of us. And what did that was a story. It was a, a story told with 24 frames per second. And that gave me that moment with my dad. So at that moment, I was like, I want this. I want to do this for others. And I, I was a kid. And that was my very first time. And like I said, sometimes then you forget, you know, so I went on and I kind of like 
lost track of what I wanted to become. And I became a musician. I've done it all. Then slowly life brought me back to it because I became a photographer and then I became an advertisement photographer, you know, advertising, commercial photography until one day where I looked at my photos and I was like, talk to me. I want this photo to talk to me. I want more than this. I want that photo to be alive. And somehow that brought me back onto, all right, there, there is a way. So I want that. And then it brought all those memories back of my dad. And I was like, okay, you see, I was always meant to become what I, you know, who I am today. And, but it started like from connections and emotions, just that's what I love. That's what storytelling is. It's create a situation in which you are just, and and uh, seriously, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about that moment with my dad. (laughs) That's beautiful. I mean, I I got goosebumps myself. Uh, Thank you for sharing that, Ricardo. I think it it takes a lot of guts to, to be vulnerable, especially with someone that you just met. You know, we've had a, a couple of exchanges over Instagram DMs. And then we connected and, and scheduled a time. Um, talk to me about that idea of connection and how you relate to it, uh, how you relate that concept of connection to your current work, the things that you have just finished up or the things that you're working on right now. I mean, obviously, there is a lot of different, there's a different spectrum of emotions. I mean, so far, I haven't created something that creates that emotion, like sadness and but I'm more, you know, I'm more into creating, uh, f- perhaps my fears get into my work. So I have a fear of claustrophobia. I have a fear of the unknown. Uh, there are certain things that, for example, my last short, it's called Long Pig. I try to really transmit to the viewer. And it's not even, sometimes it's not even intentional. You just realize that, you know, that that's, you know, every filmmaker, every storyteller, every person, every writer really puts himself into his work. So I, I'm trying to transmit what basically uh, almost like makes me feel the most. It could be uncomfortable. It could be love. It could be anything. I'm trying really to put that into something, some emotion that like, a, you know, like a picture, a motion, like a motion picture that will be able to make people feel the way I feel. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm sorry. As every artist, I'm horrible with words. And no, English is I, my second language, so it's kind of complicated, but <laughs> you're doing great. I think uh, uh, along with that, you know, you mentioned Long Pig, your short film. Talk to me about the log line and sort of the, you know, the summation, what that film is about for you uh, alongside, you know, with pr- you're sort of projecting your paranoias, your fears onto the screen. What was the launching point for that film? What, what's your why? Like, what is that reason that you wanted to tell this story? <laughs> Well, the why, there's a couple of whys involved with it. Uh, What I wanted to express, what I wanted to tell people, what I wanted to alert people of is the unknown, is you never know what hides behind door number one, door number two, door number three. So it's kind of like you could be walking by a random place in the world every day just to go to work or to go to school, and you don't know what's hiding behind that, those walls. So I kind of like I wanted to bring that to people's attention. Because a lot of times we put our guards down. We walk with our guards down. We just, you know, uh, we, didn't, we ignore, unfortunately, let's call it evil that is in the world. So with this short, I wanted just to, I picked a random, so it, it's particular because it starts with, I don't want to spoil it, but it starts with, you know, just uh, three girls driving, going to a party or whatever, right? And perhaps they drive through that road, they drive down that road every day. Now, you know, they might just drive every day down that road. And it's like, what tells a story? How do you pick a particular story? And to me, it was a random geographical point that was given by a cigarette that was dumped by one of the girls in the car. So it's almost like you're driving, you know, unfortunately, people throw, especially in Italy where I'm from, people throw cigarettes out the windows all the time. And it's like, okay, let's let's follow where that cigarette goes and let's see what hides behind that area. So it's, it's really like, there's no particular reason for that story to be told until we really go like, let's go randomly in a place given by a random object and let's go see what's behind that object right now. What's happening. 
That's Does that so make any sense? I'm sorry. That makes, that makes total sense, Ricardo. I think it makes total sense. I, I, you know, as you're talking, I'm totally visualizing and, and picturing the things that are, you know, and I've had a, a chance to take a look at the trailer and some of your past work, but it's really kind of the way I see it is you're almost letting the story be discovered instead of planning out every single piece. You're letting those plot points be discovered and you follow a thread and you don't say no you say maybe, and then you follow that thread, and maybe that leads somewhere else. And I think that's such a beautiful and organic way to tell stories because you're not pigeonholing yourself into a certain structure, into a certain kind of uh, storytelling system. It's more that you are, you know, what storytelling entails. You've seen movies, you've read, you know, other stories, and then you just take that framework and you implement it into your own style, which is focusing on the little things and seeing where that takes you. That's, that's amazing. So uh, tell me what, what happened with long pig? Uh, Where's it at now? Oh, long pig. So I, first of all, the other why, I'm sorry. I want to talk about the other why. The other yeah. why I decided to tell that why. So the previous why was to give myself a challenge after the, you know, during the pandemic, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, you talk about tool trapping a lot and it's a huge, a huge problem between all filmmakers, especially, you know, the ones that come out of school. And if they, they've been playing with so many tools, OK, now we need those tools. Otherwise, without it, I don't know what to do. And I, I had this feel I wanted to tell this story. And, and then the challenge was with no money, one night, one location, eight minutes tell that something. And that was the biggest why. That was why I wanted to make it. It was a challenge for myself. And it, it, honestly, the whole short cost me like $500. <laughs> that cost me nothing. And that's paying Amazing. the actors and food and rent of the one location. That's it. So and in the end, it's like, uh, I wanted to make that to prove to myself that, look, tool trapping is a huge thing. But you can, you can, you can, and you can. Hard work. Again, if you decide to do something, you can make it happen. All it takes is one camera. Okay. That's all it takes. Then from there, I was like, okay, now I'm able to tell the story. So then the third why becomes why have I, why have I made this? Okay, cool. It was a challenge. Why? Because I wanted to tell a story. I wanted people to feel like it. And then the next why is like, okay. Why don't I share it with the world? I mean, that's why we make stories, right? To tell them to the world. So I actually, my full budget, which was the money I saved up, I went into Film Freeway and I sent it to a bunch of festivals. And for a year, I went through all the festival, you know, between horror and non-horror. Uh, and then got me 20 victories. So I got 20, you know, I won 20 festivals. I got a bunch of different awards. And at that point, it got picked up by this, uh, which I want to talk about it, which is great. I, there is a company, there is a platform. It's called WeShort.com, which is basically the new Netflix for short films. They only focus on short films. So... They they picked it up and it's been streaming on their platform and then it's in the top ten right now with between thousands of short films and I'm really proud of it. So I it started with a challenge, a, you know, trying to tell somebody something and it looks like people are getting it, which is hey, that's the biggest victory for us, you know, as filmmakers. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Congratulations on all the success. <laughs> that that's fantastic. You know, I think whenever you look out as a filmmaker to other people's successes and other people's uh, you, you know, projects and you're seeing the quality of the work they're putting out, it can oftentimes bring one down and, and make one feel insignificant or unworthy. And I'm always a proponent that you shouldn't be looking, you should be looking to other filmmakers for inspiration and motivation, but never to compare yourself, always be comparing yourself to yourself yesterday and constantly improving because you can't possibly, you know, equate yourself to somebody that's been doing it for years and years um, or, or, you know, had a certain struck of luck or whatever that is. You know, there comes a moment with sort of, you know, quote unquote, the divine timing. Uh, it, it's truly a, a sense that uh, us filmmakers need to understand, especially with this being such a vulnerable uh, field of, you know, us being artists and we're putting ourselves out there. How do you deal with any of those kinds of insecurities or doubts that always tend to creep into our minds? 
like it's not easy. I mean, I'm the first one who logs into Instagram and sees what people are doing, <laughs> and the, yeah. you're like, why? Why am I, am I not there? What? What's again? What's their secret? What's their secret sauce? What's the recipe that brings you there? And unfortunately, it, it gets me all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm honest. I do get some moment of depression where you go like, oh man. And but you know what? First of all you start thinking, do not believe everything you see. First of all, unfortunately, this is the truth. I know for sure. I know uh, a lot of people that if you look at their Instagram, you look at what they're doing and then you look at their real life, they're not exactly the same. I'm, I mean, we all have our issues. We all have our struggles. What, so I would say do not focus too much on what you see online because it's not always the truth. Second of all, look at how many years have these people been around? I mean, there's people that started 30 years ago and now they're getting something and you automatically just started and you look at that and you start getting depressed because you want to get the same image, the same contract, the same deal, whatever they're doing. I mean, no, again, hard work, hard work, hard work. Third important thing, like you said, luck is very important, but you create your own luck. So, you know, if you see somebody out there that started when you started and perhaps it's getting some, you know, started not knowing anybody, it didn't have any connection just like you and you see it's doing something, perhaps take it as a challenge where, okay, maybe that person is putting himself in the world more than I am. Cause it's all about, honestly, it's all about being yourself, selling yourself to people. I mean, a lot of people rushing to talk about work, you know, they meet a producer and right away they were like, Hey, I got a script. I got this, you know, they get asked the same question a million times and now you become one of them. Just be yourself. Don't worry about it. Create connections because human contact, the human touch, the human connection needs to come first. Then work comes later. I mean, perhaps you don't want to play it. It's not like playing a game because if you really, you know, if there's a person in front of you who's a famous filmmaker or a produ producer or anything, guess what? He has the same passion as you do for the same things that you do. So you don't have to fake to become his friend or go out with him because you want something from him. Perhaps try to really share each other's connection, like uh, passions. That's, that's what I do. That's what I try to do. I haven't gone anywhere yet. It doesn't matter. You know what? I met so many interesting people that I can just bounce off ideas and, and talk shop and talk tools and talk, you know, writing and talk storytelling. And you know what? That's a victory itself. Then that person someday will have something that no, now that he knows you or she knows you, you know what? If there's a connection, a real human connection, and there's something where that person knows you could be useful for, they're going to remember you. They're going to call you. They're going to hook you up because that's how it is. But you again, don't do it with that idea. Don't do it with, I mean, it's your mindset that is the most important thing. Do it because you really want to have a connection with somebody who has the same passion as you do. That's, that's, that's all I do. Does it Ricardo, make sense? I'm sorry. My words keep going around and around. Ricardo, you need your own podcast. You need to start <laughs> your own podcast. <laughs> I mean, that was great. Uh, you know, I think uh, we can all distill that down to, you know, it, ultimately it's about relationships and patience, right. right? Those two ingredients kind of make up the world. You can't be expecting to be somewhere that someone else is after they've worked for years and years. And you also got to remember that the power of relationships in this particular industry cannot be talked about enough. And I appreciate you touching a lot on that. Ricardo, what are you working on right now? What, what's next for you? Well, there's a lot of things uh, I'm working on. I mean, so I divide my, let's say, my, my professional life into two parts. I am, I'm a filmmaker, you know, film director. And at the same time, I'm also a fashion film director. I got involved with fashion when I was, so I was in Italy during the pandemic and I was teaching, I was a teacher. I was teaching at this, uh, it's called Academia Italiana. It's an Italian academy and it's mainly about fashion. Now they had a uh, three year scores of, you know, photography, you know, fashion photography. And then I started adding the second year would study the, how to go from photos to video and the third year I would actually teach cinematography. So and here I was teaching them those two years. <laughs> And that got me involved with a whole world that I did not expect I would actually be involved with. And it was the world of fashion. And especially during the pandemic, I met so many stylists, so many brands that needed a way to really show the world their, you know, they couldn't do the, the, the runaways anymore. They couldn't do, uh, you know, in-person um, events or anything like that anymore. So 
I mean, you can look it up online. There's so many fashion films that came out a couple of years ago because of that. And then that, you know, I got involved with the first couple of, um, you know, fashion brands and stylists. And I really started putting my vision, my feeling, because it's not a fashion video. It's not like, you know, photos, but video. No, you come up with storytelling by adding also their, their collections. And to me, it was one of the most interesting things. I really, honestly, you look at me, I have nothing to do with fashion. But it's such an interesting world because it gives you so much freedom to express your vision and also to learn so much about a stylist who is, you know, is an artist at all senses. And you understand what they really want to tell people. So when a stylist makes, a, you know, just an outfit, it's trying to transmit what we do. It's trying to transmit something with just, you know, perhaps a color or, you know, a particular, I don't know, honestly, I don't even know the words, but they're trying to tell something. So all you do is you really get to know the stylist, you learn what they want to say, and perhaps you create a story that expresses exactly their feeling that they want to transmit to their uh, buyers or, you know, clients or anything like that. So I got involved with that and I'm still running that. I'm still working with different stylists and uh, it, it, it's becoming more and more interesting. And, you know, my point of view of that kind of like that course of my life. But at the same time, I'm also working on, you know, I wrote um, a feature film that might become a short series. So it's going to actually, we're adapting it to make it uh, 10 episodes, no, eight episodes of 10 minutes each. Mm -hmm. Then I'm working on another short film. And honestly, I love doing short films. I think I, I don't see the difference between a feature film and a short film for myself. I, I think, I, sorry, if I may, I want to talk about this, that us as filmmakers, the world itself have the stigma around short films. Short films, it's almost seen as a gym, a practice for a filmmaker to showcase what they can do so they can move to the next step. And why is a, a feature film or a series the next step? It's because there's distribution. It's because it's available in the world, okay? Because you can see it. You can watch it. Short film, you tell people, hey, go on my YouTube. It's not as cool as telling, hey, my, my film is on HBO, obviously. And that's why there's this big difference. But guess what? Short films are getting Oscars. Short films are being, they get the same awards as films get. So, that's why I really want to work on, I, I honestly, I would be a short film director my whole life. I don't have to make a feature. I'm okay with short films. Because short films, it's honest, it's actually the first form of motion picture. So when the Lumiere brothers, you know, everything came out first, they were all short films. So when, the, when did we forget how important a short film is? And how many people can tell the same story you can tell in 90 minutes, 100? 120 minutes, but eight, eight minutes. How can I transmit the same feel? The same, I want to transmit the same exact story in 13 minutes, in 15 minutes. Then somebody can take two hours. I think that's a huge, just, it's, it's, it's an amazing art form. And that's why, I, again, this WeShore.com, I'm telling everybody, go check them out. They have thousands of short films. They have uh, an Oscar winning short film. I mean, it's amazing because they're trying really to bring short film at the same level as features or series. I mean, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. I think, you know, just the ability to create short films and tell a really good impactful story in that short amount of time is not only its own art form, it's a great skill set that can translate to all kinds of types of filmmakers, whether you're a wedding videographer, whether you're doing uh -huh. corporate events, conferences, whether you're doing, com especially if you're doing commercials, you know, if you have to tell a story in 30 seconds, in 15 or six seconds, <laughs> the <laughs> ability to tell a really good, compelling story in a short amount of time is just a universally beneficial skill. So I truly appreciate you drilling that down. I'll make sure to have <laughs> I'm glad. The, all, all the links. Ricardo, uh, we have to work, unfortunately, towards wrapping up as I'm trying to keep these okay. towards about 30 minutes. But I would love to invite you back on whenever your next project inevitably starts to pick up steam, whether it's a short film or a feature or a fashion film. I think that would be super interesting, too. Um, where can our filmmakers go to find out more about you? Sure. Um, www.ricardosuriano.com. And that's R-I-C-C-A-R-D-O. 
S U R I A N O dot com. Or you just write Ricardo Serrano on Google, you go on IMDb, you can find anything. You can find me on Instagram, Ricardo Suriano Official, divided by dots. So Ricardo dot Suriano dot official. And actually, I want people to write me. I, I like talking to people about this stuff. I mean, I live for this stuff. So I encourage anybody to just shoot me a message or a comment or email. I, I seriously, that's all I do. I don't sleep. I live for <laughs> film. I live for storytelling. So well, that's your, your you know, passion, writing. Ricardo, is, is coming through loud and clear. So filmmakers take that. <laughs> Very seriously, whenever a guest offers to speak with someone and offer up any kind of insight or even just lend an ear, Ricardo is a great person. We had a back and forth over Instagram DM and is truly just a fun uh, moment to to share with <laughs> a complete stranger who now I consider to be a friend. Um, that's fantastic. Ricardo, I have, I'll, I'll make sure to have all of those links down in the show notes, filmmakers. So please be sure to check all of that out. Um, one final question for you, Ricardo. What is your deserted island movie? So if you could only watch one film for the rest of your life, what would it be? See, this is funny because a lot of people have the favorite film and the film they could watch for the rest of their life. I've always told when people ask me, what's your favorite film? I've always said, I believe my a favorite film should be the film that if at any time it's on, you're never going to be able to change the channel. So my favorite film and the film that I could watch for the rest of my life is Back to the Future 2. Part two. Oh, nice. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> and why that part is... two? Because it includes part one as well. You can, it's basically rewatching part one right. and adding more stuff to it. And so. a better quality. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. It's a, I mean, that's a genius. If there was ever a perfect film, I think that is it. <laughs> I agree a hundred percent. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, Ricardo, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much for being on the Filmmaker Secrets Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, guys. If you like that, then you are going to love my Cine Racing Challenge. This is a seven-day filmmaking competition where your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to write shoot and edit a short 60 second film in just seven days for your one chance to win with over ten thousand dollars in prizes so head over to cineracing.com that's c-i-n-e-r-a-c-i-n-g.com to get registered spots are filling up fast and the timer is ticking before the next cine racing challenge launches so be sure to head over to cineracing.com right now to get registered. I'll see you over there.